Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel. And in this video I'm going to show you some simple finger chord shapes that you can use to familiarise yourself with the minor 7, the major 7 and the 7th chord. <laughs> Guitarists and pianists are very fortunate in that when they uh, play a chord, they can see the chord. Um, it is it makes a, a shape, and um, violinists tend not to think in the same way, or certainly not to start with anyway. So I've developed this simple idea of um, finger shapes, which will help you to work out the arpeggios or the chords uh, for um, minor sevenths, major sevenths, and sevenths. And uh, that's what I'm going to show you today. So, it's a simple idea. Uh, an A minor 7, for example. If we start on an A, first finger. And uh, put down the second finger, and the third finger. That interval from there to there, you can think of it's a minor third, or you can think of it as um, the first three notes of the scale, or you can think of it as a, a note and a space, and the third note as being touching the second. So uh, what my teacher used to say, he used to say that was an inch and that's a half an inch. So basically your first two notes of the uh, arpeggio or scale are that and then um, by magic the next two are the same um, distance apart but on the next string. So knowing that um, as soon as you uh, recognize that you're playing a minor 7 chord, then if you can get your first finger on the root, then that's A minor 7. And E minor 7, uh, starting on an E, will be... And B minor 7 will be... So that's a good, easy start. Uh, not everything is going to start on a first finger, though. So if we were doing a minor 7 on a 2nd finger, let's say a B flat, the distance is the same, it's a minor 3rd, so it's... Or if you were doing it um, here, then you'd have the same pattern as we had before. But from a 2nd finger, that's B flat minor 7, F minor 7, from there, C minor 7, so that's using the same fingering for those three chords. If you were starting on an open string, uh, for a G, then uh, there's your first note, there's your second note, there's your third, that's your minor third. So it's going to be the same on the G string and on the D string. That's G minor 7, here's D minor 7, and here's A minor 7. So the minor 7 is particularly easy because it's a nice comfortable little stretch the minor 3rd and um, whichever note you start on it's easy to see where the next note is going to be and then you just shift up one string. And this will help you um, the first time you play through a tune if you arpeggiate it in this way uh, then you can hear the chords without having to hear any backing. So that's the minor 7, let's look at the major 7. So we start on the A again. So the major 7, instead of being... We're stretching the 3rd finger up. So it's now 2 tones, or 2 inches, or a major 3rd. 1, 3, 1, 3. So that's G, um, that's A major 7. E major 7, start on the E. And then again it's the double stretch. And the same again, B major 7, so exactly the same shape, same fingering. 
If you were starting on a second finger, let's say a B flat major seven, then it's a bit of a stretch, but it's, it's a second finger, third finger, fourth finger. F major seven, the same. C major seven, the same. So although we've changed the fingering from the first finger, it's still always the same distance between the notes. And starting an open string, the G minor 7 was, but the G major 7 is, D major 7, and A major 7. So, so far we've got the minor 7 and the major 7. Uh, the third shape I want to show you is the 7th, or flattened 7. It's the same thing. Basically, um, an 8 is like that. So this is not symmetrical. You've got a big stretch, and then a small stretch. Because the 7th, that note has been brought down. So an E7 will be the same fingering. B7 will be the same fingering. If you start on a second finger, for example a B flat 7, uh, it's 2424. Two, four. F7, C7. If you start on an open string, then G7. So your second finger is going down in that position and then in that position. D7, A7. So by using this simple idea of the three chord shape patterns, you should be able to play any chord arpeggio. Finally, I've got a little exercise. Uh, it's a tune called Sergeant Major Minor, which is a, a witty little title. Uh, it comes from my beginning jazz violin book and uh, you can use this exercise to practice those arpeggios. So, um, I'll show you what it sounds like. And then, by reading through and just following the chords, uh, you should be able to work this out. So ideally at this tempo you should be able to play all the way through it and uh, I'm going to play uh, just the first line and then uh, you can try playing the whole thing yourself along with the backing. So I hope you managed to plough your way through that. Um, if you struggle, then just uh, keep on doing it. Um, I do have on my Patreon page another video of um, this backing track with um, picking out different intervals of the chords, which you might also find useful. So uh, if you want a copy of the dots of, um, to help you with these shapes and the chord sequence, then uh, do subscribe, send me an email, and I'll be happy to send those to you. See you again soon.
Thank you.